Okay, this is going to be part one of this uh, stop and go robot, vintage robot. Actually means it uh, walks, stops, then walks again. And during that stop walking period, another function could be happening, which I haven't uh, decided what I wanted to have happen yet. So right now I just have a, uh, a simple gear cam mechanism here. So when it's not walking, this gear cam will raise. So maybe I want to have it open a door or open the head or push guns out. I don't know. Something. Haven't decided what yet. And uh, I've done other videos describing how this uh, rotating wedge or rotating lever works in spreading two gears apart. And the two gears have one tooth difference. One gear in my case has 20 teeth and the other gear has 19. And because they have a different number of gears, that means they turn into at a different speed and because they turn at a different speed that means the ramp can then push them apart and then snap back together and by pushing and pulling you can shift gears and do different things so in this case I've got this walking robot here and let's see I'm not quite sure where I need I think I'll be back here enough so you can see the whole thing and I'm gonna connect it to this little battery pack right here so right now it's in the stop mode. This is up. And now as you can see it walks. It'll take like four steps. And then this will... It's back in the stop mode again. And then it'll just keep cycling. It's a very common function like in your rotomatic robots and things like that. And if we get a little closer, you can actually see the two gears. Now they're apart. It's walking. Now they're together. And this gear is up. And this uh, whole contrivance will run just as well on 3 volts, just slower. I like the speed of it on uh, 6 volts, which is 4 pen light batteries in this case. And let's do a little slideshow on the build. Let's get the camera in here close enough so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. And get the mouse where I can advance the pictures. So there's a, uh, a main frame and right now I have it designed to use with a TT gear motor. This is the 48 to 1, the, f the faster speed. And there's two holes where these two screws can go in to screw the motor directly into the housing. Just like that. And then the shaft of the motor is sticking up when we're going to put this uh, nine tooth gear down onto that shaft just like that and then this shaft is a separate piece and the gear is a separate piece and this gear is a separate piece and this part of the wedge gear is actually made up of multiple pieces there's the gear there's a center hub piece that it has to be able to slip on because I use the hex shaft because they're stronger and you can print them um, without supports so I need a bushing that fits the hex shaft and yet has a smooth surface for the gear to rotate on. Then another bushing for the case. I have a, this smaller gear is what's going to engage the walking mechanism later. These all slide onto the shaft. This is a little spring. In my case I had a spring kit from Harbor Freight and they have a bunch of different size springs in there. And This is just a return spring to push the two gears back together when they're not leveraged apart. And another bushing will go on this end. Um, this one gear, well both these could be glued on. They need to be glued on in the right place in order to find the right place. You kind of have to test fit things together. And uh, here you can see everything is slid in. How these two gears now interface against this nine tooth gear we talked about. Because they are the same diameter. They just have a different number of teeth by one. And then this end cap is going to go on there. The end cap has actually changed since I did this design. As you can see on here, the end cap used to end right there. But I uh, extended it up so I could put another gear up here to interface. So I'm kind of uh, starting part two. So here's the gearbox part. That little gear is not engaged here. When these two gears move apart because of the wedge, then that little gear will engage this one. And this is the walking gear. 
I'm going to put a cam on on either end of the walking. There's already one cam there and one here. You put them 180 degrees out of phase so the robot can walk. Then you have to make the uh, feet and leg assemblies. And you have a, a main foot frame, left and right. There is no left and right on this linkage piece here, or on the wheels, or on these covers. But there is a left and right on the leg, and a left and right on the main feet. This is actually a right foot we're looking at right here. The first thing you want to do is take one of these outside covers and glue it on the solid side of that open frame. Like so. Then on this side we've got this cap piece and we're going to glue it on in place. The main thing that makes a left and right in this, in this case is, is some of these bushings that have to do with the leg linkage. So it looks like that one is glued together. Now we can start uh, assembling these things. I've cut a bunch of uh, metal axles. I used an eighth inch uh, mild steel. It's actually a welding rod. that had a bunch of them laying around. So whatever that works out to be in the land of metric if that's where you live. And if you have something that's a little bit large, of course you can drill things out. But anyway, you're going to need six axles. They're like uh, an inch and a quarter long. They have to be able to fit in flush when they slide all the way in so that you can glue a cap on them in the end to, to hold them in place. This is a rear ratchet. It's going to fit in there that this pin is going to go on. Then there will be a front ratchet. Let's uh, move on. There's the front one. And the very front of it has a taper to it. You want the pointed taper part down facing out. Here you can see this ratchet's in place. The pin's in. When this one slid back in there, that pin will go down. Then we're going to put the ratchet wheels in. You just want to make sure that you aim the ratchet wheels the right way. If you don't, you flip them over. And uh, you can test them. Put them in there, drop the axles. And if you hear it clicking when the foot rolls forward, that's correct. And then it should lock when you try to push the, the foot back. So they're going to look like, like that when they're put on. Now it's time to put in the uh, leg linkage. Because the knees have a bend to the front, you're going to put this in facing that way and the longer part of the back of them facing in. That first side that we started on is the inside part of the leg. This is the outside part of the leg. Then we're going to slide this over that whole linkage piece and this pin will pin into that hole. Just like that. Everything's now pinned up and in place. So now we can glue this cover on to hold all those pins in place. And it's going to look like that. That will just simply slide on to two, right now I have two long rods um, of an arbitrary length because in the end when I design a body I want these rods to go into two holes in the sides of the body to uh, hold the body in place but also to cap off the rod links when the body is connected in the middle. I'm thinking a left and right side to the body so the two have the shells would, would come together. And that's what you just saw operating. The only difference is, like I say, is I'd extended this uh, upper part of the gearbox up so I could put the second gear for the second effect, which I haven't really decided what it's going to be yet. But um, let's, bring the, let's bring the mechanism back. In fact, if you would like to see the mechanism running at a slower speed, maybe that would be... Uh, easier to see what's going on. I'll run it on three volts so it'll just be just crawling along here. And there's that. And there's that. So he's not in any hurry on three volts. Plenty of power. That's not a problem. I just like the speed better at uh, six volts. Still going to take the same number of steps and then it's going to switch where it just moved to this level. See, I have that lever moving up. I'm thinking maybe uh, either a door in the front that opens or maybe a head splitter where the head pops open. Like that. Okay, I think that's it.